<coughs> okay, uh, can you hear my voice? Boleh dengar suara saya? Yes sir, yes sir. Boleh sir. Boleh, boleh. Okay, good, thank you. Okay, so let me share the slide first. Okay, so we will continue our lesson uh, on Wednesday in which uh, let me do some recap about uh, the things that we want to learn today, obviously. Okay, so basically just do uh, some recap regarding our, uh, regarding the topic on Wednesday. So we actually... Uh, have learned about the applications of the Newton's law. Okay, the applications of Newton's law, which is uh, involves tension, okay, incline from elevator moment and also the pulley. Okay, so this is uh, uh, the examples of how uh, the tension will take place. Okay, not just the tension, we also uh, have to um, do some. Uh, uh, component okay resolve a, a force to resolve a force into its component of x and y in order to solve the problem okay so in this case at the end of the uh, every problem okay we may see that there will be some resolve of the components and become so in order to do to in order to get the uh, magnitude and also direction uh, and in okay this is the example of the incline uh, plus with the tension. Okay, where is uh, our incline incline moment? Okay, where uh, the one thing that I should highlight here is the, the position of weight. Okay, you look you look at the positions of weight or the directions of weight. It should be straight downward, straight downward. Mesti ke straight ke bawah. Tak boleh sengit, tak boleh uh, ke ke kiri ke kanan. Eh, it must be straight downward. And the normal force. It's the force that acting on the surface, okay, acting on the surface, which is uh, the perpendicular to the surface. So the normal force will depend on the surface, okay. So the the correct way or the best way to learn uh, or to do some uh, uh, a lot of examples, especially for this four uh, examples, uh, four types of. Um, a problem uh, involving uh, force, okay, or problems or applications in force, okay. So we need to establish some uh, equation, okay, because we want to find the the unknown. In order to find the unknown, we need to establish. We need to write down uh, some equation uh, according to the the unknown. If the unknown involves two unknown. Okay, if, if, there, uh, if the question wants you to find uh, two unknowns, you need to have at least two equations. Okay, if the question asks you to find three unknowns, then you need to find at least three equations. So if you have four, you have five, you have more than three, then it will be good enough. Okay, so you need to know okay, how to resolve force again and again. I will, rem I will always uh, remind you uh, to do... Uh, to to practice uh, how to resolve the force into its component because it's very very good to understand that thing for for instance okay uh, if you look carefully to this part okay you look carefully this is negative mg sine theta and this is mg cos theta but uh, in my practice I always don't want to put negative okay I just mention here as mg cos theta and this one is mg sine theta I always want uh, everything uh, not in the negative one okay but uh, uh, um, okay uh, but considering that if I don't want to put the negative I should know that everything that goes up must minus what everything in in the bottom part okay everything that goes on the uh, on the uh, on the right on your right it should minus everything on the left Okay, so that is, you know, you need to know that thing. Okay, uh, because of that, I don't want to use negative. Okay, but for those who want to use negative, it, it is not, uh, 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 um, 
it is not wrong to do that okay so you have mg sin theta and mg cos theta so that is the how you resolve the mg because right now work is equivalent to mg so you need to resolve this work because the work will have in the inclined moment the work will have o theta okay the the the, the work will have, sorry the the weight will have theta therefore it needs to be resolved okay so this one when it resolves then uh, submission of f will become ma but in this case a is equivalent to zero so this that's why submission of f is equivalent to zero okay because of the sled is not moving however if you look at this example the car is moving uh, moving to this way so therefore the submission of fx must be equal to ma okay so you look at how they resolve it mg sin theta mg cos theta and and also uh, that is the three equations involved okay if there is no friction then this only three can be put inside the equation remember we have submission of fx equals to ma and we also have submission of fy equals to zero okay for instance this car is not floating around okay this car move in along the x axis okay therefore when the car move along the x axis okay it will be equivalent to zero okay the fx the fy is not equal to ma it's always equal to ma but acceleration is zero at the y axis okay and acceleration zero at y axis okay and then that's why the submission of fy equals to zero okay and then we do we do some uh, equation we write down some equation in order to get the answer okay in the pulley system remember okay we need to uh, know the ground the ground rules of having the equations is you must know okay that the lift is going upward or going downward okay it is not possible to lift to move in x axis lift will only move in y axis in y axis it's either going up or going down and then will depends if if you look carefully to this example okay it is about okay how you're gonna write down the equations of the fish that have been hanged okay, on um uh, in the elevator okay fish been hanged in the elevator in order to get it this way okay to, uh, to calculate uh, uh its apparent weight okay apparent weight meaning that we need to know the tension and the mg the mg means uh, the weight that is always perpendicular it always uh, uh projected uh, downward okay ke bawah and the t is because of it has been hang and of course in this case you need to know okay, how they write down the equations of submission of f equals to m a what specifically in y exists okay which ones you should you should put uh, uh at the front so that depending on how uh, the the system we uh is happen is happen on during that time uh, for example if the lift or the elevator is going up then the tension will go first okay because the tension is in the front okay okay the tension will reach the top first compared to mg but if the uh, elevator is going down you need to say the analogy saja eh? the elevator is going down then you can write down mg minus t equals to ma because uh, everything that has been put at the front of the equation must be equal to positive acceleration. It okay? must be equal to positive acceleration. Okay, then you can write down the equation. Okay, so that's with the pulley. And remember the pulley system. Okay, the pulley must be light. Okay, frictionless. This is very important. Frictionless. Okay, and the string, the cord here should be light also light massless so sometimes you can mention massless okay in order to uh, assume so that we can use uh, the force okay yeah, the equilibrium of force inside the problem okay okay so uh, uh, on yesterday uh, on, on wednesday we also learned about the friction okay yeah, types of friction we have the uh, kinetic friction and a static friction Okay, what is the static friction here? A magnitude of the force of static friction equals to magnitude of applied force. 
Okay, so it, we can uh, simplify it with the use of uh, graph, which means the first part of the uh, of uh, before uh, we can make something move is what we call in the static region. So in the build up to form the maximum static region, so there when it reach the maximum point, then it now it's been converted to kinetic region where the object is in motion. Yeah, the object is moving. Uh, so uh, many of us are thinking that you know, when the object move, okay, move around, so they don't have a friction. That is wrong because the friction happens to the static object and to the object that is in move or in motion. Okay, so because uh, we have a FF and also FK. Okay, static friction, static friction with the FS equivalent to mu S times with the normal force, and FK is the mu K times with the normal force. Okay, FK equivalent to mu K times, and remember uh, the friction, okay, occurs to the, uh, or always oppose the motion. Okay, let's say if you want to move to the right, the friction will move to the left. Uh, the direction of friction is going to oppose you, which is the friction will be on your left. Okay, if you want to go up, then the friction will, will always oppose your, your motion. So it will the directions of friction right now will be downward. Okay, so simple. Uh, everything uh, uh, in our life, if this is not mentioned frictionless, okay, the question will mention frictionless. Uh, okay, we need to assume. Okay, a lot of things uh, before this. If you want you want to consider a friction, then you should mention the question frictionless or smooth. Uh, maybe. A frictionless uh, smooth surface, smooth surface. Uh, okay, but uh, when mentioned uh, static friction coefficient of, uh, if there is uh, some uh, mention in the question about a uh, mu s mu k, for instance, okay, maybe a rough surface. Uh, okay, this is a very good word uh, in order to mention there is some friction in the problem. Okay, a rough surface. Okay, so that is also considered, that is also involved a uh, friction. Okay, so these are the coefficients of friction. Don't have to memorize this value because it should be uh, inside your problem or inside your questions or maybe you want to consider it uh, to calculate it. Okay, okay, and of course, every possible um, situation, for instance, now we have a problem of uh, object on, on the incline, then if the the, the, the question is mentioned about uh, the static friction, therefore you must include okay, uh, friction. If it mentioned uh, a smooth surface or frictionless, then uh, don't put the friction. Okay? Simple. Okay, everything that have a, 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 a contact between a surface to the object, so normally we will have a friction. Okay, so regardless of the situation, maybe a static or a kinetic, a kinetic so that depending on the situation. Okay, okay, so this is the string uh, we have covered this one, and of course, this is the translational equilibrium. So, this is the 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 second part of which is from the summation of f equals to m a, but at this time a equals to zero. So that will give you translational equilibrium, some sort like a static equilibrium. Okay, sometimes we mention it as a static equilibrium. That means in the situation of uh, let's say you hang something, okay, like the one that we we hang the uh the uh, pictures like this. So this is the static equilibrium. That means it doesn't move in x axis or y axis. It doesn't move much in y. It doesn't move in x. There is no movement in x and also y. So submission of f equals to zero. In this case, submission of f x equal to zero or submission of f y equals to zero. Okay. Okay. This is about pulley. All right.
right? So this is the static equilibrium, uh, equilibrium, static equilibrium, where this is how they uh, uh, have considered that where is the tension, where is the directions of tension. So you need to know the directions of tension should be towards something that is firm, towards something, okay? So bila kita tengok arah dia mesti ke arah tempat yang lebih ku, kukuh. Ha, so dan tempat lebih kukuh ialah mana? Ha, mana dia? Yang mana-mana dia guna lah. Ceiling ataupun wall eh. So biasanya kalau dekat atas kita panggil dia ceiling. Okay. Kalau dekat dinding kita panggil sebagai wall. Right. And of course there is some weight. Okay. If you look carefully, if the we hang something it doesn't include, it doesn't involve normal force because there is no contact between the surface and the object. Simple, eh? Okay, this is the connected object. So we learned this one a very, uh, a little bit, uh, uh, okay, uh, in our, in our lesson, uh, I think last week, okay, that's how we connect the object. Okay, the connecting object will give you a tension that towards each other. Okay, towards each other. So you must put every object that have a contact or have a, been attached with a string. Okay, it must have a tension. For example, here, we have tension uh, from M1 to M2. Okay, because this is the same string that we are used. So, the T is all the same. Okay, you cannot put here as T2, T1. No, don't put it as T1 and T2. Just put it as T and T. That means if you're calculating something, you need to consider this step. The tension is the same because we are using the same string. Okay, we are using the same string. Okay? Yes? So, in this case, uh, for, for instance, you can see here, uh, this is where one system... This is another system. Okay, we can have two systems inside one question. Okay, if you want to add, if there is some uh, friction involved, uh, then it can also involve friction going to this way. Okay, which means how do I know that the friction is going to the left based on the uh, notations of acceleration? Because the acceleration is going to the right, the friction should be against the motion, which means the friction will move to the Left. Okay, you can see here there is some weight and some normal force. Normally, I didn't put normal force here because I don't. I really want that normal force should be a uh, perpendicular to the surface. I want it to be a free body diagram. That's why I do. I can understand the situation. For example, if I bring this one to have a a a, a, a system in um a free body diagram as BD, so I can write down write down that as W. Normal F S or F and this one is T. So that's how I'm right. Okay. So you need to know the free body diagram bus. So you need to do uh, you need to scan the system so that you know okay. So this system will have two um <clears throat> two uh, two parts, which means uh, the object that's on the table and also the object has been uh, pulling that object okay from the sides of the pulley okay because the pulley will use the same uh, string or cord so we need to use the same key okay as usual okay try to imagine that this pulley is just a matter of one thing okay that connecting between m1 and m2 so that's why we are saying this is the same key they are using the same key, the same tension, okay? Okay, so... Alright, so right now, we want to see uh, the other part, okay? If you look carefully, this is the from taken from the chapter 7, okay? Uh, obviously, uh, chapter 7 is quite uh, uh, different because uh, before this, we learned in chapter 4, and now we jump to chapter 4, 7. Why we need to jump from chapter 4 to chapter 7? Okay, so in the chapter 7, there will be some sub-chapter of circular motion. Okay, circular motion. That circular motion involves force. Okay, 
it also involves force. So that's why we take that subchapter, okay, then we put it all together this week to, so that you don't have to uh, worry much in terms of circular motion because uh, you need to know about force when you are considering circular motion. If you look carefully, the chapter 7, which tells you a lot about circular motion in circle. Okay, pergerakan dalam bulatan. So that's why when it comes to the force, then we bring out, we take out the circular, the circular motion. Okay, we put it inside this chapter. Okay, so don't get me wrong. If you try to find the circular motion, it's not in the fourth chapter. Okay, it's in the circular motion about the uh, about this one. Okay, so when you uh, um, try to find it, okay, on the uh, chapter from the reference book, please you know, refer to the motion in circle or uh, uh, circular motion. Okay, so basically on the a few chapters. Uh, uh, and next, okay. So according to Newton's second law, yes. Now we are applying a Newton second law. What is Newton second law? Submission of F equals to M A. Okay. A force is required to change the speed, direction, or both. Okay. If you drive a car with a constant speed on a circular track, circular track. Okay. Bayangkan track itu berbentuk circle. The directions of the car's motion change continuously. Kenapa continuous? Okay, because a force must act on the car to cause this change in direction. Okay, so sebenarnya kalau kita tengok situasi ini, biasanya kita tengok dalam keadaan uh, whenever we are driving a car, maybe we, we okay, maybe uh, you are, you drive the car, okay, where you try to enter or you try to go through uh, some uh, situation where the road is in. When you come to the roundabout, okay, roundabout, uh, bulatan kan, roundabout, okay. So now you need to uh, divert your attention from the straight road into the uh, a bit a little bit of circular road. Okay, uh, road yang berbentuk ataupun jalan yang berbentuk bulat. So what happened? Uh, okay, so during that time, okay, so we want to highlight that there, there will be some centripetal force. Okay, if you look carefully, you will uh, you will find that some force acting when you okay definitely from the submission of F equals to M E. Okay, but whenever you reach to the situation where you are on the roundabout, what happened to the A? A now we become your 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 your, your normal acceleration now will become V square over r so there if you look carefully okay you can see here v square over r is what this is the velocity square over a radius okay a velocity square over a radius so which means when you go to run runabout okay you may find that this is the center of the runabout okay okay when you go around the runabout you can see that uh, you will have some velocity and at the same time, it will retain the radius. So a velocity over a radius, then you will may find that this is not a normal acceleration anymore. Because whenever we ventured or we, we come into circular motion, then your acceleration, your normal acceleration, need to be changed to be centripetal acceleration. It is known as centripetal acceleration. Okay, the this one. Okay, right now the centripetal acceleration is v square over r. Okay, v square over r. So if you put this value inside the submission of f equals to a t p, okay, we need to do some. Uh, uh, we need to put a, a little bit of subscript over there in order to uh, make sure that uh, you know that a and a c p is not the same. Okay, a is the acceleration where ACP is the centripetal acceleration. Why? Because we are now in the motions of circle. We move in circle. Kita bergerak dalam bulatan. Okay? If there is a, uh, if, if, there, if there is no bulatan, then we can just use a normal acceleration. So, ACP. So, what is ACP? Uh, then we can derive it as mv square over r. 
This S equals to mv square over R is known as centripetal force. Okay. Centripetal force. Then you can know that centripetal force is based on the uh, acceleration, the centripetal acceleration. The directions of force will be equal to the directions of acceleration. So that means uh, where is the, the correct way? Or where is the centripetal force is happen? Okay, so in the problem of let's say you have a car moving around the roundabout, for instance. Okay, so this should be your weight. Okay, going down should be your weight. And then you have a normal force going up. Okay, because the the car is in the uh, is on the road, so therefore, okay, the normal force will take place, which means the normal force is uh, directly perpendicular to the road, perpendicular to the road, ninety ninety degree to the road. And if you look carefully, there is some F F. This F F is called uh uh, uh some uh acceleration of the if you look carefully, uh, there is some centripetal acceleration. Okay, the directions of centripetal acceleration will be going to the center. Okay, will be going to the center. That means uh, we need to know. Okay, the normal acceleration is going forward, but the accelerate uh, centripetal acceleration will go to the center of the circle. Okay. So if you look carefully, if there is some motion, for example, okay, so if this is our car moving along, so we may have as a normal center, and of course we may have A C T. Okay, A C T and a centripetal acceleration and acceleration. Okay, the direction of centripetal acceleration is going to the center at any point. At any point. Okay, it's always pointing. ACP. Over here, it will always pointing to the center. <coughs> okay. Uh, if the acceleration is going that way, that well, for, uh, and of course, the the acceleration, centripetal acceleration, uh, the directions of centripetal acceleration will determine the directions of centripetal force. So definitely, centripetal force will moving uh, will will be directed to to the center. Okay, so that's why we are saying here that, okay, when you have a centripetal acceleration or when the object moves in circles with a constant speed, okay, the right way is the constant speed, a force must act on it and it is directed towards the center of the circle. So that means that is the centripetal force. Okay, which means we also use it as FCP. Or centripetal force doesn't matter. The substitute is not uh, important, but for you to understand, this is FCP. Okay, which means now we have m v square over r. Every possible motion that moves in circle, we have a centripetal acceleration. Of. So therefore, it will have a centripetal force. This is v. Eh? For example, this is v velocity. It's not r. Okay, the okay, the no the the denominator is R. Okay, M G square over R. So let's look at the uh, possible examples here. A car travels at a constant speed. Now we use a constant speed of thirty miles per hour. Okay, which thirteen miles per hour is the thirteen point four meter per second on a level circular turn. Of radius fifty meters, so this uh, this should be your v, this should be your r. What minimum coefficients of static friction? Okay, so what minimum uh, coefficients of static friction between the tires and roadway will allow the car to make the circular turn with uh, without sliding? Okay, uh, I should remind you that whenever we are in the roundabout. Okay, we always tend to move straight. Okay, but we need to do some banking. Okay, uh, a lot of things happen eh, at the roundabout. We often see uh, some accident happen because the car, the car or the move, the moving object is tend to skip. 
what is the meaning of skip? Let's say if you want to move along uh, with the centripetal force, okay, the car is tend to move away from the of the circle, away from the circle. Okay, try to move away from the circle. So therefore, without a proper handling uh, of the car, you may skip the uh, terbabas ketepi. So because of that, you need some um, friction. Okay, you need some friction and also together with the centripetal acceleration to keep the car from skidding. So therefore, the uh, I will use another. Okay, so the directions of force, uh, the directions of friction is going to be the directions of centripetal acceleration because the car will tend will tend to skip. Akan terbabas keluar, jadi dia akan dicover oleh uh, friction that happen to be on the uh, same uh, directions as the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so that's why what a minimum coefficient of static friction here. Okay, which means the mu s. Okay, f s equals to mu s times n. Okay, between the tires and roadway, we allow the car to make the circular turn with the without sliding. Okay, so first of all, we need to calculate the centripetal acceleration. So what is the centripetal acceleration? F C T equals to m v square of r. Then you can establish what is your F C T. That F C T is going that way. Okay, going to the center and together with the uh, friction. So therefore, uh, friction is equivalent to F S equals to mu S times n. Then what is n? Due to submission of F Y equals to zero, n minus m g equals to zero, and equals to m g. So you can bring this thing into this one, m g, okay, and then you may find what is the mu s. Okay, we can easily uh, put that F s equals to mu s m g. Okay, or m v square over r is equivalent to mu s m g. So this is from uh, centripetal acceleration, uh, centripetal force, and this one is from f s. f c t equivalent to f x, and then in the end we will get zero point three six six value. Okay. So with the uh, some banking, then what will happen? So you look carefully at this uh, example. The Daytona International Speedway in the Daytona Beach. Florida is a famous for its races, especially the Daytona 500. Okay, uh, held every uh, February. Okay, both of its courses feature four-story, 331-degree bank curve. So, what is the importance of bank curve? Okay, if you happen to be on the road, okay, please. Uh, Try to get to the during during the uh, the traffic. You can see the traffic, or you can see the surface of the road. Okay, especially okay at the roundabout, it's actually a little bit banking. Banking means um, it's like it should be slide down to the center. Okay, yeah, like this one, banking. Or you can see here we are at the Olympics uh, before this. Uh, at the velodrome, for for instance, you can see that the 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 uh, the surface of the velodrome is actually banking. Okay, obviously, if you if you uh, tend to watch the the cyclists, okay, they cycle without the brake. How can they brake? Okay, so because of the uh, it happens that uh, uh, the situations of surface surface in the velodrome into sedikit bank okay dia akan naik beberapa degree uh, okay kenapa dia buat macam tu okay to reduce this centripetal acceleration okay ataupun uh, to make sure that the accident or ataupun uh, kejadian uh, terbabas kurang okay uh, so that's why they can easily cycle okay, on the velodrome all in on the velodrome okay so uh, so that's with the Daytona International Speedway. This speedway will normally uh, uh, bentuk dia punya lita dia bulat je. Bulat je. Tapi dengan proper 
banking. Dia ada dia ada lebih dia lebih condong sikit. Ha, okey dia lebih condong sikit. Okey. If a car negotiates the curve too slowly, okay, it tends to slip down the incline of the turn. Ha, maksudnya dia akan jatuh ke bawah lah. Kalau dia bawa kereta too slow. Okay. Whereas if it's going too fast, it may begin to slide up slide up the incline. Ha, dia akan jadi terbabas, terbabas ke arah sana. So find the necessary centripetal acceleration on this bank curve so that the car won't slip down or slide up the incline. Okay, so situation, situation dia very crucial whenever you move in a very uh, high velocity. Okay, for instance, if you are too fast, then you can uh, uh, skid around. Okay, you akan pergi ke arah sini. Bila you terlalu perlahan, mungkin you akan jatuh ke, ke bawah. Akan lebih slide ke bawah. So, you need a proper velocity. You need some proper acceleration or proper for, uh, centripetal force to keep you at the same acceleration or the same uh, situation as it is. Okay, so that's why it's very good to understand the topic because this is a very, very good approach in order to, 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 to uh, for instance, maybe nanti you keluar, uh, you dah jadi engineer untuk buat jalan because this is very, uh, a good method. Of course, there will be some uh, applications Lagi, lagi banyak calculation involved tapi this is the fundamental okay so find the necessary centripetal acceleration how are we going to find centripetal acceleration right now if you look carefully the car is not exactly as the the one that we did after uh, just now okay uh, at first this equation okay okay now you can see that the n and mg is in par uh, it's a parallel okay but at the bank curve, N and MG doesn't, uh, uh, it's not on the straight line anymore. Okay, but according to this part, you can see here. Okay, you can see here that N right now has N cos theta. Okay. And N sin theta. N cos theta and N sin theta. And of course, this one is M, Mg, for example, okay? Mg, so Mg cos theta, for instance, Mg, but this one, okay, is based on this one only, N cos theta and Mg. So, so submission of S equals to Na, so N cos theta minus Mg, because Mg is going down, is equivalent to zero. Okay, because that is considered that as why exists, uh, the car doesn't float away, the car tak terapung, car dia duduk je di atas tu, so therefore, n cos theta minus mg, n equals to mg cos theta. Okay, so the centripetal force comes is uh, with the use of uh, here, okay, n sin theta, which comes from here, this one. N sin theta, this is N cos theta, this is the original N. Okay, the original N now have been uh, divided or have been resolved into its component. Okay, now we have N sin theta, N cos theta. So N sin theta is directed towards the center. So this is FCT. So that's why N sin theta equals to, FCT equals to N sin theta. Okay, and then equivalent to MG. Uh, sine, uh, uh, n sin theta is uh, n equals to mg. So you just replace this one with mg. n sin theta over cos theta okay, is equivalent to mg tan theta. Okay, sin theta over cos theta, you will get mg tan theta. And then we can derive the centripetal acceleration, okay, which means F equals to mv square over r or F equals to macp. So that acp is equivalent to F over m. The okay, F over m, what is your F? Okay, mg tan theta over m. Then you can cancel out m to get acp is equivalent to g tan theta. Right? So that will give you 5.89 meter per second square.
And the next question, calculate the speed of the race, race car. Then after you get the ACP, or just, just replace, replace the value with the equation V square over R. Okay, so in order to get V, you will get 43.1 meter per second. Okay, so this is the situation. Both uh, situations, okay, from the road that is not banked and the, uh, the banking road, so there are some different in terms of calculation. So you can see from the banking road, it's much more complicated compared to the uh, a road that is uh, a, a normal road. But in order to reduce uh, a some skidding of the vehicle, we need to do some banking to the road. Okay, so this is another example of how you're going to uh, uh, get the value of uh, or get to know the centripetal acceleration. Okay, so just look at the question. The 1,200 kilogram car rounds a corner of a radius 45. So this is R. Okay, this is M. If the coefficients of static friction between the wires and the root is mu s equals to 0 0.82 so this is mu s is 0 0.82 what is the greatest speed of the car can have in the corner without speeding so that means the the, the maximum value of v square so that it won't keep so how to do that then we can use first we need to calculate based on the equation okay now we have submission of fy we have Summation of Fy equals to 0 and minus Mg equals to 0 and equals to Mg. Now we have N equals to Mg. How about Fs? Fs is equal to mu S times N. Then you can put this value to this, so which means this is ML, a mu S Mg. Okay, Fs is mu S Mg. Okay, at the same time, what happened to the centripetal acceleration? It should be going to this way also. So, mu s m z equivalent to ACP. Okay, so mu s m g will equal equivalent to m v square over. Uh, then you can get the value of uh, per the questions are what is the greatest uh, v. Okay, so this is. You get you can get v from the equation v you have m you have g you have mu s you can have r okay so in the end the answer is 19 meter per second okay 19 meter per second okay, it's very good example okay uh, this is another example of banking a little bit banking with compared to uh, the normal route okay if a road is banked at the proper angle, a car can round a corner without any assistance from friction. Okay. So, when the road banks, okay, they were saying it, okay, the, the possible friction has been reduced. Ha, kalau tadi, kalau dia duduk straight je, memang akan ada friction involved. Tapi kalau dia bank, kita boleh katakan, ha, macam dia cakap, ha, a, a car can round a corner without any assistance from the friction between the tires and the road. So find the appropriate banking angle for a 900kg car traveling at the 20.5 meter per second in a turn of a radius of 85 meters. So right now, n cos theta, remember n cos theta here, this is Okay, this is n cos theta. Remember how we get the n cos theta due to the resolving uh, how we resolve n because n right now will have a angle. We have an angle, so n cos theta is straight with the uh, w. So we can n cos theta minus mg equals to zero. Okay, so what is n? N is mg over cos theta. Okay, and then that is number one. Okay, because we don't want to find, uh, we don't have n and we don't have theta. We, we must find what is theta and n. So we need another, as a, we need another um, equation. Okay, what is the equation? The equation is based on the 
FTP, which is FTP is equivalent to uh, N sine theta. Uh, this is very good indicator, N sine theta, which is here. Okay, this is N sine theta, and this is also FTP, okay, which is N sine theta is equivalent to MV square over R. Okay, so what is MV square over R? Then you can jumble up the equation, okay, and derive or you can uh, substitute the, the, the value of n inside this equation and in the end you will get that the theta is equivalent to 26.7 degrees okay there are two ways or two two possible uh, incidents uh, to consider number one is when the road is not banking and when there are some banks on the road okay when the road is not banking then you can use uh, uh, some friction Okay, you need to use a friction, but when the root is banking, yeah, you don't have to put friction, but you need to uh, resolve a uh, normal force, n cos theta and n sin theta. Okay, so an object may be cha uh, changing uh, its speed as it moves in a circle. Okay, for instance, uh, when the object moves in circles, so then you will have a centripetal acceleration going to the center. Because this is considered to be center. Okay, so the, 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 the correct direction of the centripetal acceleration is to the, towards the center. And this is your translational acceleration. Uh, this we call AT. It's the translational acceleration. Okay, translational acceleration, centripetal acceleration. And when these both combine, you will get A equivalent to a square root of a t square plus a c p square. This is the total acceleration. So in the end, you will get the value of meter per second square, which which involves translational acceleration together with the centripetal acceleration. I guess we can apply the pi trigonometry. Uh, sorry, we can apply the Pythagoras theorem. Okay. So today. So that, that's the end of the uh, lesson. So do some recap on whatever we have learned. Okay, today we learned about centripetal acceleration. Okay, the circular motion, the chapter 7, but have a force. Okay, they have a centripetal acceleration. That's why we take this centripetal acceleration, we put in, ever, uh, in this chapter because we are considering uh, this week we learned all about forces. Okay, all about forces. So, uh, on chapter 7, uh, it has a subchapter of circular motion that involves force. So, what is force? Centripetal force. So, centripetal force is the force that acts towards the center of the circle. When the object moves in circle. Okay, object moves in circle, they will have a force that acting uh, towards the center. Okay, so what is the uh, equation of the centripetal force? F equals to m v square over r because of the v square over r is the a t p centripetal acceleration okay centripetal acceleration of, of course when we have a centripetal acceleration look at the examples the examples will be first uh, the root without banking and the root with the banking okay if the root doesn't have bank then you should consider a uh, friction okay but if the root doesn't have bank then there is no friction involved because the car or the vehicle will move uh, free okay free. it will move uh, uh, straight without any resistance okay so that's why uh, when we considering uh, 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 a velocity uh, a motion at a very highest velocity so we need to apply a bank okay so that's why we well, can see the bank at the speed race uh, uh, whole, uh, speed race, uh, uh, speedway um, track, and also valid room, for, for example. Okay, so these are also some examples regarding centripetal force. Remember, we will use a lot of centripetal force in our life. Okay, and in, in fact, we will again use the centripetal force in, in the other chapter. Okay, because this is the fundamentals of the force. Okay, fundamental of the force. All right. I think that's all for today. Any question?
Any question? Ada soalan? Okay, so far so good.